Last week, I traveled up to Ontario, Canada to visit the United Chargers new manufacturing facility and get a factory tour. While I was there, I sat down with CEO Gleb Nikiforov to discuss the company's latest offering, the Grizzle E Ultimate, which is an 80 amp Wi-Fi connected smart charger. The company just attained UL certification for the Grizzly Ultimate and will begin sales later this week. So let's see what Nikki Faroff has to say about the company's latest offering. Okay, so I'm here today with Gleb Nikiforov, he is the CEO of United Chargers. If you follow this channel, you may have seen my United Chargers factory walk around that we posted a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is a follow-up video and I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one chat with Gleb about this new upcoming charger that's gonna be hitting the market really soon if it hasn't already. I don't know about the timing of when we're recording this versus when it's gonna be released, but it's gonna be really soon. And this is the new 80 amp Grizzly Ultimate. Um, those that follow my channel know that uh, Glub's been selling the Grizzly Classic and the Grizzly Smart for a while. I've reviewed both of those products a few times. They're always on my uh, recommended charger list. But now he's coming out with a new higher amperage charger. This is an 80 amp unit. And uh, we're going to talk about here today. And uh, Gleb, thanks for coming on. First of all, first question really quick. Um, why, why an 80 amp charger? Why do we need such high powered AC charging? Yes, uh, well, I kind of followed your advice through the years that uh, you've been asking for a faster charger. We all know that uh, 48 amp charging right now is a kind of a standard. We kind of skip that because we work really hard to get to the next level, to the ultimate level. And ultimately, because you cannot draw more than 80 amps from the AC circuit in North America, so that charger would be the most powerful charger on the market right now for the price at six dollars uh, 699 us dollars msrp and you know at 699 dollars it actually costs less than some of the 48 amp chargers on the market and while this is an 80 amp unit you don't have to deliver 80 amps there, there's an internal dip switch where upon installation you can lower that down so if somebody let's say is in the market for a 48 amp charger today uh, this could still be, uh, or should be considered, right? Because Absolutely. they can just dial it down and then they have that extra power in the future if, let's say, they improve and put in a larger circuit. Absolutely, and this, this is a flexible charger. It goes from 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and 80 amps. So you can run it on a 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and, eight, uh, uh, 60 and 100 amp circuits. So full variety of circuits available in North America, you can run the charger on. If you don't have today full 100 amps available, then you can run it on whatever amperage you have. And once you upgrade your panel or get additional power, you can always use the same unit, just bump it up on the dip switch and then have it provide you full 80 amps. So it's not just an 80 amp charger, it's the whole range charger. Okay. And, um so there's an internal dip switch. You wouldn't do that through the app, right? Because this does come with the smartphone app, right? The Grizzly yes. app. Okay, and you yeah, do it so, inside. So uh, this charger is a hardwired, char will only be sold as hardwired. And this hardwired charger need to be installed by a certified electrician. And certified electrician, we, we include instructions with the charger for electrician and the locks and everything that's required uh, to hardwire it properly will know how to adjust the circuit inside dip switches to match the breaker. And this, we would ask you guys, please don't do play with the dip switches with this charger. It's dangerous. Only certified electrician would have authority to adjust those switches at the time of installation. And if your electrician will come later on and upgrade your circuit from 50 amp to 100 amp, then he will do the proper dip switch settings for you. Uh, so un unlike we do with our Grizzly Classic and Grizzly Smart today with 40 amp chargers, we ask you to do the dip switch selection. For this charger, we'll ask you not to touch it and leave it to the certified electrician. And that's because of the amount of power 
that potentially goes is, is going to be passing through this. And I mean, uh, this is nothing new for me and people that follow my channel. They know I, I always recommend on any charger, even your, your 40 amp Grizzly Classic, to have them installed by certified electricians and not just any certified electricians. I like to recommend electricians that specialize in electric vehicle charging equipment because they understand the amount of power that passes through these and the fact that there's going to be heating and cooling of all the connections and everything needs to be torqued just right. It's, it's why I partnered with my channel sponsor, Q Merit, basically because, I mean, that's all they do is, is they specialize in in electric vehicle charging equipment. They're the largest installer of EV charging equipment in North America. And it's why I partnered with them because I'm, I try to preach safety first. So, you know, if you are, if you do buy the Grizzly Ultimate, uh, follow Gleb's advice and, uh, you know, have a certified experienced electrician. I recommend Cumera, but you can use anybody that um, you feel comfortable with that has a license and is experienced with electric vehicle charging equipment. Let them adjust the power output because if if you're not operating on a 100 amp circuit and and you and you have this thing set to 80 amps, I mean bad things happen in a, in a, the best circumstance you just trip a circuit breaker, but bad things can happen. 80 amps it's a lot yeah. of power and it can be a disaster, so please don't do it yourself. Yeah. Now I know Qmerit very well. I like these guys. They are great, great people. They do a lot of great service. Uh, we partnered with a different company. Mm -hmm. Every charger which comes out from our production line now has a sticker on it with QR code with a uh, no upfront. Mm -hmm. uh, they they do similar things like as like long as Qmerit, they're yeah. experienced yeah, yeah. And, and they specialize in yeah, the charging. In this. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't tell people they have to use Qmerit. Yeah, yeah. I recommend no, no, no. them. Qmerit is a, a very yeah. very good reliable yeah. source we use uh, no upfront because they they do for us the incentives rebates mm -hmm. uh, as well and now they came up with a new product which actually if you scan the qr code gets you the certified electrician in the area okay yeah so right. so every every box from our conveyor now comes with this qr code, QR code. to okay. help help you guys so, find the right. certified electrician who you can trust and if you can't find them, always go to Qmeri. They are great in, uh, in what they're doing, right? So. Okay. State of Charge is powered by Qmerit. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charging equipment you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and let the EV charging installation professionals at Qmerit install it. Well, let's move on from installation. Yes. I want to talk about this unit. Yes. So, so um, this is a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. Um, it's obviously uh, fine for residential use. You know, I have an ADM charger in my garage for my big battery Ford F-150 Lightning. I can't wait to try out uh, this on my Lightning. But but you're you're also promoting, and we talked about this earlier, that this might be a bigger deal for commercial use than for in-home use. And explain why. Yes. Well, uh, the the current we have a lot of existential problems with electrification right now. We don't have quite proper technology yet to be fully 100% electric. And uh, the availability of power is not, not available everywhere, especially in the rural areas and places where you cannot just install DC fast charger because you have to run a, a line of power for millions and millions of dollars for like maybe 30, 40 miles away. And uh, there is no way you can put a DC super hub there, but you need to have something that will give you enough juice if you strand it to get to the next point. And uh, people installing those chargers at home, uh, this is a home charger. The, the next generation of this charger, and even this charger, the next generation will have LTE built in as an option, uh, but you can, if you live in a rural area or places where you there is not a lot of charging infrastructure you can actually make money with this charger because we are going to implement within the next couple of months the peer-to-peer uh, -peer network uh, uh, payment system where you can name your price for the time or kilowatt hour and this system by the way has a very precise measurement instruments inside to measure it with 1.5 uh, the version of the of the of the power consumed, right? Uh, so we'll be eligible for the future uh, future applications of such uh, things that's coming up in North America right mm -hmm. now. Uh, and you can 
make it available outside. This is the most robust charger you can get. It can withstand any temperature, uh, any heat, any any cold, uh, any weather, any anything. You can put it outside and make it available for, for your neighbors, for people who come by and possibly make some money out of it. And, and you sell a, like a pedestal, right, to, to mount it on? So if somebody wanted, there's one behind us, you could see uh, up there and they have the pedestal. So that's how you would mount it exterior. Well, you could mount it on a building, but, yeah. but you could mount it on that pedestal. Honestly, a six by six post, uh, pressure treated for the weather Works. is the best. Oh, is really? the best, really. The most, Sometimes the, the simplest uh, yeah, the answer simplest is the solution, best. solution, you mm -hmm. just put it in the ground and uh, here you go, right? Okay. So no need to spend too much money on it. Yeah, well, Again, we're trying to make some return on investment so you can actually make some money with it. So we, the cost and everything we try to minimize in order, to, in order for people to really understand that, wow, now I can, I can, I can pay for my equipment, I can make some money so I can install more. And this is how I think we will solve partially the infrastructure problem. Well, so you said the price is $699, which in my opinion is a very good price for an 80 amp Wi-Fi connected smart charger. It will come to market as the least expensive 80 amp charger on the market. Um, so that's that's number one. But you, we, we know when you're installing public infrastructure, the initial cost is only part of the picture. I've owned and operated level two public chargers. And, and to be honest with you, the ongoing costs are the bigger bear than the initial investment, which, you know, some of the other network out there, I mean, some, some, some of the, char the level two chargers you, you buy, they're three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 just for the, the unit. This is $700 and, you know, I don't know how much it's gonna cost you for the four, six by six uh, <laughs> pressure treated timber, but that's all you need to, to do. But how about the ongoing cost? What, are you, what is it gonna cost to manage the back end? To, uh, is there a commission that people have to pay on, so, on the so revenue? We, so we're currently implementing a monthly fee or yearly fee, and we're actually looking at the values below $10 per month mm -hmm. to operate the commercial, commercial uh, payment system, and which will include as well uh, power sharing and uh, access control, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, I think, I think we will, what we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate the red tape, eliminate the barriers for, for adoption which exist today. And those barriers exist not because somebody created them, but because of the natural flow of the development and the advancement of the infrastructure, right? So as you, as you might remember, there have been a huge monstrous unit which were able to produce only uh, 30 amp output and they cost, as you said, like five, six thousand dollars ten years ago, right? Today we are talking about 80 amp charger, which is the next step in the evolution of electric vehicle charging infrastructure, which you can buy and install altogether for probably under twelve hundred dollars mm -hmm. uh, with the post and with the electrician and with everything else. And if you're gonna make a dollar an hour uh, on this charger and it's in a busy place, well, uh, within six months, you're gonna pay this unit off and the infrastructure off. And this unit has three year warranty. So you have three years to go mm -hmm. and uh, f guaranteed f to work for three years. Yeah. And, uh, and you can make uh, probably some money at you, the end, right? You also sell an additional two year warranty. Yep. So I, you know, I mean, if, if, if somebody out there is thinking about buying this for an outdoor commercial application, I'd recommend bought paying the extra two years absolutely, personally. Absolutely. Because it, when it's in the pot, I mean, this thing is bulletproof, the unit itself, but other things can break. Um, and what, let, speaking of which, we've all seen public charging infrastructure um, have problems. Yes. These connectors break no matter how good of a connector it is. People drop them on the ground. They get run over by snow plows. Um, if, if this connector gets broken, if the cable gets cut, can, will you sell a, a, a replacement cable? How, how does it get fixed? So uh, because it's a hardwired installation, we're going to send an electrician to actually replace the, the cable at your location if the uh, reason for the broken cable is malfunction of the cable. If that is a vandalism, yeah. I would recommend to buy a commercial insurance for vandalism. Yeah. And in this case, you can write off that uh, repair on, a, on your commercial insurance yeah. and all commercial insurance should have anti-vandalism 
uh, things sure. in there. But, right? but you can, but you'll sell the cable, the replacement cable. You no, know, we uh, will not sell the replacement cable. It's dangerous to do it yourself. No, 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 not, not to yourself. I mean to the license, to the yes. installer. Yes. What I'm getting at is it, it's fixable. It's fixable. Because I've heard some people that have had public chargers where the companies have come back to them and say, just buy a new charger. We don't recommend you replacing cables and opening the box up and everything. So you, you will sell a replacement cable. That, yes. that was my question. And we're not going to discuss other, other companies because mm -hmm. that conversation we're going to take hours and hours. <laughs> yeah. But the, 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 the main concern and reason why there are broken public chargers out there is because they don't make money to the host. Mm -hmm. And to the host, it's better to keep it broken because, as you know, if the charger is broken, they stop paying, and, and, and that's it. doesn't cost owner anything. Mm -hmm. But today, with the today infrastructure, unfortunately, uh, they don't make money. They don't make money. That's why, that's why we experience what we experience. And we're mm -hmm. trying to fix it. But introducing units, yes, they, they, they don't have beautiful screens. Yes, they don't have all the kind of bells and whistles and ma cable management systems and this and that. But if it doesn't cut the bill, if it doesn't make it profitable, yeah. then we have to lose that. Yeah. We have to lose everything we can, make them profitable. And then once we make them profitable, we'll figure out the ways how to make them look better, more convenient, uh, other features. But these features are not, not paramount. The major feature is does this unit make you money or not in a commercial application? And that's the only question we ask. Yeah. And, and, and bringing it to market at this price and having a low annual fee. I mean, some of the other networks charge $300 a year per plug, and some of them have dual plugs. So, you know, you're, 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 paying, you're paying a lot yeah, of money. You, you know, you've been yeah, there. I know. You know that, I, I've, that I've had that. You know, yeah. and, and yes, I never made money in all the years that I operated my public charging infrastructure, my level two chargers. It, I did it as a public service. They lost money every year. I mean, the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars I lost. But um, not everybody wants to do that. You know, in order for, for us to get, you know, for level two charging to proliferate in the public, there has to be a business case for it. And, yeah, absolutely, uh, and, absolutely. And I assume that's, that's really, it seemed to me upon talking to you, you're more excited about this for that application than you are for selling it to me so I could put it in my garage. Well, garage works fine. Yeah. Garage will work fine. And that is a normal use of a charger, and we are not worried about that. What I'm worried is we need to advance electrification. We need to go over that 40% electrification, which we're going to hit this barrier soon. And, and without a robust infrastructure, we won't be able to go over it and, and pass this 40% adoption. That's what I think and with the current technology and with current infrastructure, that's where we're going to stop. And... And that's going to be a disaster. We, we should, as a species, we should drop burning fuel and we should use electricity as, a, as, as species and uh, in order to progress. Mm -hmm. So I noticed this has J1772 plug on it. Now we know that the North American industry is transitioning to NAX or J3400. Um, is this going to be available with, or I know it has to be at some point, how soon will we see this unit with a J3400 option? So by the time this video will be published, probably already will be available in the store. I guess I should have asked you that before. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so right at launch, it's gonna be available in both, in, in both, with both yeah. uh, connectors. Yes, you need to understand that we are a very small company with very limited resources. Uh, we can only do that much and our funds are limited. We are not supported by any government organization. We haven't received z zero dollars from any government grant or any program. Mm -hmm. So we're all running on pure capitalism principles. Mm -hmm. So the launch of this charger will be a little bit slower because it takes a lot of capital expenses for us to buy parts, to assemble, to manufacture. So uh, we're going to launch NAX and j 172 at the same time but the quantities of the initial few months will be very limited. Okay. So don't be, uh, like, anticipate we're going to speed up the production by the mid of summer, end of summer, we're going to have, we're going to saturate the market pretty well, but the first initial two, three months of manufacturing will have scarce quantities, unfortunately. But we, we're going to launch with an AX cable. So interpret that as saying, if you really want one of these, order it right now. Don't wait. <laughs> the earlier you can order it, the better chance that you're going to get one. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you another technical question. And uh, 
we haven't discussed this, but since you haven't mentioned it yet, I'm assuming this can't do it. Can this unit power share? Because I know a lot of people ask me, it's a very powerful unit, um, and if you're gonna use it in public spaces, maybe it would be an advantage to have it to be able to share one circuit. Okay, okay. so the good news about this unit, co uh, compared to current smart unit, it is a full OCPP compliant unit with smart profile. That means that it's, uh, it can connect to any OCPP power source. It can be used by any OCPP provider. And if that OCPP provider has power sharing capabilities, because power sharing is not in the charger, mm -hmm. power sharing is in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And if these capabilities exist, then this unit can be, absolutely can be power shared. Our software is in development. The power sharing functionality mm -hmm. is in development. And by the end of summer, beginning of fall, we're gonna have that mm -hmm. automatically available to every uh, Grizzly Connect customer. Okay, through your software. Through the software, Yeah, right? okay, well that, that's important because especially with such a high powered unit, I could see say a condo association or apartment complex wanting to install five of these, but they don't have 500 amps of dedicated power. And quite honestly, most of the EVs that are gonna be charging aren't gonna be pulling 80 amps. So if you got one car pulling 12 amps, one car pulling 20, two doing 48, you know, you, you, you could do that with 200 amp feeding there is five of these absolutely. units. There, we, and we are not trying to be uh, a, like a maturely software company, so you understand, right? We want, to, we want to get to our software system as much capability as we can, but it takes time. We are not fully focused on software. So we are not a threat to all other software companies out there, uh, per se, we are in, in discussions with many bright and brilliant software companies out there which do in MURPS, which do in multifamily residential, and they are testing this unit right now. They're going to use it as their equipment in the future, most definitely. And, uh, of course, under their supervision, these chargers can do all the beautiful things they are done by, by this software. Okay, so let, let's talk. Since we're talking about software, I have to bring up the fact that when you launched Grizzly Smart at first, I did a review of it, you were using third-party software and it, it didn't work well. I mean, I, I had a lot of my followers tell me, Tom, the Charge Lab app isn't working right. And, you know, um, and, and I know now you relaunched Grizzly Smart with the Grizzly app, which I did a review of and I actually like it. I think you did a better job than what I was getting from the third-party suppliers. So this is a two-tiered question. What happened back then? And number two, why didn't you just do it this way from the start? Okay, so we would definitely, if we would have enough resources, we would definitely do it by ourselves from the start. But again, you need to understand, we are one of the five com companies which make EV chargers in North America, actually make them in North America, and we received zero money from any government funds. All our, all our competitors who are in, in the market with us, they received somewhere between 50 to 450 million dollars in funding. We have zero. So we, I need to feed my people, I need to make chargers, I need to sell them. And no, I'm not making much because of my, my prices, right? So at that time, it was absolutely impossible for us three years ago to make our own software. Software is a very expensive process. So we... We went out to the market and we discussed it with a couple of companies and, uh, and we ended up with Charge Lab that they will uh, help us uh, bring this charger on their end and they haven't had, uh, see the problem is all those software companies, they're focused only on commercial applications. Mm -hmm. So none of them had a simple free home charging tool. So they had to develop it. It's expense on their end as well. So yeah. they, they have to downgrade their software so eliminate all the commercial options mm -hmm. to just have a home charging application, right? Uh, that is not simple to use. That, that's uh, as well a commitment. So ChargeLab went ahead and they, they did it. Uh, but then on ongoing cost, you need to support. Software is an is a ever living thing, right? If you stop feeding it, <laughs> it dies, right? So, and there should be a source where to feed it. And ChargeLab didn't see uh, that they will be able to monetize on this in the near future. The idea was like, okay, guys, we're going to launch it under your brand, and then you're going to convert these people into commercial application. They're going to use it. 
it's a good advertisement. It just it just takes long time and need loans and investment. And I believe Charles Lab dropped the ball somewhere in the middle, saying like like the expenses they go into um, go through, but by the time they see the monetization, it's too much for them. And they kind of unfortunately stopped uh, developing the applications, fixing it and stuff. So we we have we're running a program of replacement of charge lab units right now. So if you have a charge lab unit, it's not uh, not working. We will replace the PCBA inside the unit and uh, bring it up on Grizzly on Grizzly Connect. Uh, the details of such uh, upgrade are available at our website. Uh, please go ahead, mm -hmm. register for the upgrade, get all the information, and uh, and and we'll do it. I believe the only shipping cost that's what you're going to incur mm -hmm. in this case, and we'll take care of the. PCBA replacement, so you're gonna pretty much get a new unit uh, because the PCBA is the only thing that wears out on these units. And if you do have your uh, Grizzly Smart with the old software, I can attest because I've used both of them extensively. The new software is much better, and even though it still is kind of new, you just launched it. It's still, I'm, I'm sure there's some some things you're gonna add to it. I do like the layout of of, of how you have things displayed, and uh, I, I was actually surprised. I thought your first version was going to be really rudimentary, but when I did the review and, and was using it, I'm like, this is actually pretty good. So, um, you know, you you waited to release it until it was like in a pretty good shape. We, I thought it was going to be more rough than what it was. We hired a, a lot of talented engineers. So we we found possibility to get money to do it, and we and we feed in this course. Mm -hmm. We feed in this course a lot, and we hope it, it's gonna it's gonna win the the. It's going to win. Okay. So, yeah. so listen, I've got what I need to know about Grizzly Ultimate. Any last comments you want to talk about this unit? I know you're super excited about it. I've talked to Gleb off camera and I've spent the day up here at his facility up in Ontario. The manufacturing facility I mentioned earlier, I have a video on that. It's a great facility, 36,000 square feet. They make all their charges for North America here. Um, what, what do you want people to think of when they're considering a high-powered charger, why should they go for this new Grizzly Ultimate? Well, I think uh, there are a few factors which, which people should consider when they buy any product is where it's made, uh, where this money going to go to, and uh, what's going to be the, uh, the outcome of that, and, and if they can get a good support of the product, and if the company has any future. So there's a couple of, a couple of things in the equation. So uh, talking about the company, we, uh, we have so many plans, you don't know. We have so many plans to do. We're gonna finish the lineup of level two chargers this year. We're gonna bring, we're bringing the Mexican manufacturing up. We, we, we go into Europe, we have a European factory in Ukraine, which uh, is uh, going to be probably uh, copied into another European country as well to, because of the war right now. And you know, it's really hard to, to operate in the country which is under war, uh, uh, but we 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 planning to to flood the market, the world market, with our products and uh, bring the good name of Canada and made in Canada products to the world, proudly wearing our flag and our locality here to and engineering uh, and our knowledge and everything that we got to the world. Uh, and then we're going to start working on the new technology that doesn't exist today. But this technology will help solve all other electrification problems. Okay, sounds good. And uh, besides all that, it's a really good solid charger that's <laughs> nearly indestructible. You got to check out the video that Gleb made a few years ago of driving. Now, that was the Grizzly Classic, but it has the same box. Yes. Driving over this unit on a frozen lake with a Argo, like all terrain vehicle, just to show how strong it is. It's one of the, uh, I'd say most robust uh, enclosures of any electric vehicle charger. It's the same enclosure as you use on Grizzly Smart, yep. Grizzly Classic. It's a solid aluminum. I mean, you could beat this thing with a bat all day long and you won't break it. And that's important for uh, uh, public, Outdoor you know, application. outdoor right? applications. It's absolutely. So it's, it's a good solid unit is what anti, I'm saying. Anti-vandal unit. You yeah. cannot break it and there is no point, right? So. Yeah. All right. Listen, Gleb, thank you very much. This was a, a, a good interview. Uh, I'm looking forward to using the, uh, the new Ultimate and uh, good luck with your future endeavors. Absolutely. Thank you very much. 
So Nikiforov has told me that he just dropped one in the mail. I should be getting a Grizzly Ultimate within a couple of days. I'll begin my review as soon as possible. And we'll see just how good the new 80 amp Grizzly Ultimate is. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.